Let's talk about when one acquires a home. There is usually a moment of excitement. What are the three things one must think about in terms of the decision to buy a house? Okay, so firstly, I'd say definitely speak to a bond originator. You can find out how much you qualify for. Uh -huh. Then you have a, a game plan. Yeah. After that, I'd say find a very good area. Also have a look at the property prices in that area and then view as many properties as you can. Insurance wise, what would be the most practical things to think about before I make the offer? I want to just uh, touch on the fact that the understanding of what insurance is for to put me back in the position that I was in before I encountered the loss. So when you are searching for one, you are looking for one, a good company to associate yourself with, Momentum Insure, obviously. So, and then you need to uh, also look at what your risks are. We conduct a proper needs analysis in first interaction to make sure that we understand you personally as to what risks are facing you because it's different for different people. A person who's in a slope would need to be looking at things like floods and the consistency thereof. And that's why the needs analysis gives us guidance as to where should we advise, where should we protect and where should we put contingencies in place in order to safeguard uh, anything that uh, unforeseen that might happen. Before I make the offer, is it the time to get my advisor to kind of give me an indication of some costs related to insurance? Or is it after I've moved in that I get my broker to give me a quote? Like, where is a good point? When you have received confirmation that your bond has been approved, because immediately when that has happened, that transaction has happened and it's, it's approved, it yeah. means now the risk is in your name. You are now the person holding insurable interest in that particular item. Yeah. Should something happen to it, you are the one who's going to bear the cost of that. Yeah. That's when the perfect time is for us to then issue the policy for you. Yeah. Momentum Insure is about safety. What safety things do you tend to emphasize when you're showcasing a house? Cameras add value, beams add value. Mm -hmm. I mentioned the security companies in the area as well. Yeah. If you get an area expert, they know what the crime is mm. like, so they can advise. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But that's mostly what, what people look for. Yeah. Mm. What would be in that home structure insurance in terms of safety and then the contents bit as well? I mean, we've got a holistic safety value proposition. Yeah. We have an offering for your personal safety. Yeah. We have a mobile panic button called Safety Alert, yeah. which you can access as soon as you become a client. Yeah. You've got unlimited access to it. You don't pay for it. Yeah. And you can add a loved one. You know, for myself personally, I have a child who is in a boarding school, so mm -hmm. I can add him. When he doesn't feel safe, he can activate the armed response alarm and they come to him yeah. in seconds. And then in terms of where a house is used for rental purposes and insurance is being purchased, what are the expectations from an insurance, like in terms of disclosing the usage of the house? And then I get a tenant to rent a cottage because a lot of homes have cottages on the back. So how important is your knowledge of the presence of another party outside of my family in my insurance premiums or your declarations? If there's a tenant, then we can cover your building, absolutely. Yeah. But obviously the tenant that will be moving in um, will then have to then arrange um, cover with us again for their contents. Is it my responsibility to ensure that my tenant has insurance in their own capacity? No, you as a landlord, don't have insurable interest on the contents. Should someone break in, God forbid, they steal the tenant's property, yeah. you are not going to be the one to replace the tenant's property. Uh -huh. He then or she needs to be uh, the one who takes up cover yeah. for that. Yeah. We're going on to summer holidays. Yeah. We all like obviously are excited to pack our bags, get out of town. In terms of momentum ensures safety expectations or guidelines, what are good behaviors when one leaves their home for a holiday or for a long period of time, say five days. So definitely I've heard people say, can I leave my neighbor with my key? It's a no, no, oh, really? <laughs> don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think that, you know, things like getting someone that you trust, it could be a family member to look after your property when you're away is definitely a good thing. Switching off your geyser if nobody's there. We deal with load shedding now. Something happens to your geyser as a result of, you know, an outage or something. Yeah. It's a claim that you were not ready to deal with. So 
certainly do some precautions to ensure that you are protecting the assets that you have. Your house is linked to an armed response of some sort. Yeah. Definitely activate that alarm. And you know, I've heard that lately there's very sophisticated offering that's available on your phone. You can activate the alarm literally wherever you are. So yeah. do yeah. take precaution. Yeah. And then what about electricals from an insurance standpoint? The workmanship needs to be in order. Basically, the person who does the work needs to be accredited to do the work. If you get the accredited person, you will get the necessary certificates to provide to us as the insurers to say, listen, guys, I did some electrical work. The person who did the work is competent and registered. Uh, the people who build your house need to be compliant. They need to be people who are registered to do the work in order for us to cover you. I remember there was a point I had taken a break from corporate and there were fires in um, Garden Road. So do you remember them? And people's homes were like burnt down. And I remember feeling like, oh my God, if these fires had you know affected me in my property i had no insurance because i was hustling and sometimes it's the insurance that gets cancelled when the budget is tight what advice is happening as a consequence of climate change we understand that economically it's tough and in most cases the houses that we live in are cost a lot more than the cars we drive of course. right yeah, yeah. so and you live in there not yeah. just you your car might be something that you use alone but yeah. Your house is something that houses everybody in your home. People always say insurance is a grudge purchase. Yeah. Never. It's not. Yes, it's something that people don't wake up in the morning and, and think, think I want to buy. Yeah. But it is definitely a must have. Yeah. Yeah. That the thing that I've seen is because obviously of how expensive Absolutely. property is. Yes. I just have that much more um what's the word? Appreciation mm -hmm. of, of the value of incurring the monthly expense because of the setback. I understand the value that lies in it. And Melissa, I want to talk to you about neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> My side of the wall is a tree. My neighbor's side of the wall is a cracked wall that's leaning over or the roots that are creeping onto her pavement, to her driveway. Is there a law about who is responsible for what cost? Uh, mm. Because, I mean, my neighbor was kind in saying, oh, let's demolish the wall and rebuild. We'll go 50-50. Yeah. But then with the tree, I had to cut the tree at my cost yeah. because the tree was on my side of the wall. Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, there's no law. There isn't? No, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, but what's, so the general, in, the what's in... the norm in, in terms of just navigating that? Yeah. Is it just the kindness of the neighbor? Yeah, so, I mean, the, the tree is in your garden. So yeah. th then it's your responsibility because it's in your garden. But if you can just chat to your neighbor and maybe have a discussion, then maybe they yeah. can chip in and also help out. And let's all discuss load shedding, generators, inverters, roofs collapsing. I've seen a lot of that on social media. What guidance would you give to people who are wanting to get alternative source of power? People are looking for solar now, obviously, okay. because there's no yeah. electricity. Yeah. Uh, what's also very nice is a lot of banks are also helping out with solar. So mm -hmm. if you buy a property, there there are options where you can look at maybe putting it onto the bond with certain okay. banks, not nice. all of them, which is yeah. great. Yeah. Which is a good selling <laughs> feature, solar or generator? I'd say solar. Okay. Um, yeah, generator, you've got to be very careful because you don't want the noise. Uh, you know, so the neighbors complain about the noise. Yeah, um, yeah and the fumes. Yeah, and the yeah. fumes. I mean, yeah. I've got a rental property now where they had a huge fight where the neighbor was having her generator and he all he had was fumes in his house. So mm. It was okay. not pleasant. Okay. So definitely solar is the way to go. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. And then from an insurer's perspective and in our safety proposition, what is, uh, is there a, a, a sort of guidance or preference that we have as Momentum Insure? We do insure solar, solar panels, but okay. there is a, a, an interesting conversation that I think Melissa might give us input on. The, the actual work to install a solar panel is not done by an electrician that would have been someone who gave you that um, certificate of compliance. Okay. Uh, okay. So you've got someone else coming to do the work in the same property. Yeah. From a compliance point of view, what happens? Does that nullify that certificate? Yeah. Because the, the solar guys would tell you that you need to contact your, your electrician after this so that they, come, they can come and check. If you want to extend that power to the second house, your electrician must do it, they can't do it. There's no law and no, no compliance certificates at the moment with solar, but I, I would probably say you need to get your electrician in yeah. to have a, a, a good check on and then make yeah. sure that it's done properly. Shwe Shwe, what do you want to remind people about the safety proposition as it relates to presence um, in terms of property, 
contents and personal safety. So we actually have a holistic value proposition for safety. Mm. We have a, a rewards program where we give people endpoints for safe behavior. So depending on your policy combination, so if it's a car only, when you add a home or contents or whatever, it's more points for you. And to access it, really all you need to do is download the Momentum app on yeah. your the relevant app store, go to the terms and conditions, accept, and voila, okay. safety returns is available. Okay. And then the second piece is how do I start earning points now? Yeah. So we've got a telematics offering called Safe Days mm -hmm. that measures on the app how you drive. Mm -hmm. We can detect things like driver fatigue, mm -hmm. distracted driving, how you brake, all of these things. Mm -hmm. We also have a questionnaire on our website where you can answer your safety questions, more points for you. And then you also have the, you know, the safety alert part that I spoke about earlier, the mobile panic button. When you engage with it as well, you earn more points. And then we also give you points for self-service. So what we consider self-service is things like you've updated your details. Um, You've loaded your, your hail and uh, windscreen claims online, so we have you able to log it on our website or through the app. Thanks, guys.